I just want to, I don't know, I want to look at it as the outside of their helmet, outside of the court, like see who they really are representing. Because I think there are a lot of agents that are just in here just trying to get your money and I don't want that for them. I've seen it happen. So I just want to be on that other side and be able to just represent them in a way that represents their values and who they are outside the field because they're more than just athletes. So. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, we we, we find the most interesting people out here in the world. And I, I pride myself on that because, I mean, there's some pretty interesting people out here, right? Some pretty interesting people with some pretty dope stories. And the purpose of Beyond the Ball, if this might be your first time listening, the premise of the show is we like to offer stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree so wherever you're listening i would encourage you to make sure you smash that subscribe button if you're on youtube make sure to subscribe because there we put put out exclusive content in addition to the podcast so be sure to connect there but now without further ado we have a very special guest in the building okay and uh i want i want to i want to just share this I'm, I'm, I'm really just excited for today's guest uh i i found, I found this young lady when i was when i was on instagram and i was like she looks like she's doing some pretty interesting stuff and I saw her just keep popping up, and I was like, "Oh, she does that too. Well, that's, that's pretty neat." Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce her. So, so, so first and foremost, she, she's a she's a track athlete, a Division One uh, track athlete. She's an aspiring sport agent, as well as she is the host of Tiny Talks on the Track. Let me go ahead and welcome Miss Demetra Carter. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. So, what? So. Now I'm gonna kick it to you because I know I didn't I didn't hit on everything, but I'm gonna kick it to you and give you a chance just to you know give yourself an introduction to the people who might not be familiar with you. Right, right. So hello, my name is Demetria Carter. I'm originally born and raised from Kansas City, Kansas. Um, I go to Baylor University right now. I walked onto the track team back in 2017 in the fall. Been here for four years, graduated this past December. Now I'm working on my master's in sport management. Like you said, I run track, so I do the 100, 200. I'm a sprinter. I like to get it over with, so that is what I do. Um, I'm also AGA, so I work for Baylor Athletics Marketing and Fan Engagement on the side as well. And yeah, that's pretty much me. So I'm, I'm curious. I always wonder, like, because you know, like other sports, like like basketball and football, it's like you run and you condition to like be able to have the stamina to run and score the touchdown, or run the fast break, or you know, do do these do these other things. But like, what is it you tell yourself when when you're running? Because you're run, you're running <laughs> to run some more. So he, he, help me. He, I'll be honest. Um, practice sucks. Um, practice hurts. Because I'm a runner, 100, 200, I'm done. And practice, either you do repeat 200, you just keep going. So honestly, I'm going to be real with you. Um, I'm very spiritual. So me and the Lord, that's how I get through it every single time. There's no doubt about it. But uh, from a mental standpoint, you just have to say mentally, mentally tough. Um, and then if it's like a long run, um, everybody has their go-to. Me personally, I repeat the Lord's Prayer because um, that's the only person that I know is going to get me through it. Because we all know I'm a sprinter. That's my specialty. Gotcha. <laughs> that, that's so funny. That's so fun. Wow. Okay. I didn't. Okay. It's, it's, it's good. It's good to get your perspective because I mean, I always ask myself this question. I'm like, oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. So uh, good. Good. That's, that's, that's good to know. That, that's good to know. So just, just with the, with the aspect of track and you being from Kansas. So you was out there running like yeah. that cold that weather is that weather that, that that hawk is out there in kansas it is so we get all four seasons um that's why i came down south but nobody told me waco was north texas so that winter snowstorm in texas we definitely got hit it was definitely our ice apocalypse but yeah so we got all four seasons tried to escape it i kind of escaped it <laughs> oh wow wow okay <laughs> so Take us back. When when was your introduction to to track, or or, or why did you decide to to run? Because especially just just like what you said, you know, you're a sprinter, so you just like to get it get it over. You like to get it done. So, like, what what what, what led into you making that decision to to want to compete on 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 the on the track? 
Right. So um, I originally played soccer all throughout middle school. Soccer was the sport. Um, and they said I was fast. And I was like, OK, I don't know what that means. They like, you should run track. So I went out for a day and I told my mom I hated it because I'm like, why would I run in circles for fun in terms of like, who does that? I, was like, I could go play with the ball. Like, that seems like the way to go. And then here I am, like eight years later, running track for fun. And I absolutely love it. I really do. Um, I really do enjoy my sport. But it all started with soccer. Um, I do miss it every now and then, but um, I absolutely love my sport that I'm in now. Um, being fast is cool, and you don't need a ball to ball to run fast because um, people still enjoy the sport. So that's how I got into it. Mm, okay. And do you, do you, do you think you're a better soccer player than than a track runner, or vice versa? You know, I always think I might have been better at soccer. It's a little too late to find out now. But I always think in the back of my head, what if like that was my sport? Like, what if that was a sport I should have stuck with? But I'm grateful to be a track athlete, honestly. I love it. Gotcha. 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 F- fair enough. Fair enough. So you're you're an aspiring sports agent. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have a lot of marketing experience. So back in 2019, I was the 1% that was hired to work for Nike as an intern. I work for Washington Media Group. So they're the number two agency, according to Forbes. They're on the West Coast. Um, and then I'm working for CAA this summer. They're the number one agency. They're also on the West Coast. So I know people are going to be watching the draft, but um, CAA, I believe, has seven of the round one draft draft pick so far um i was counted during the draft so just to be a part of that is really where i want to go because i as an athlete i just want to i don't know i want to look at an athlete outside of their helmet outside of the court like see who they really are representing because i think there are a lot of agents that are just in here just trying to get your money and i don't want that for them i've seen it happen so i just want to be on that other side and be able to just represent them in a way that represents their values and who they are outside the field because they're more than just athletes so that's where my passion comes to be an agent because mm. I see there's so many problems. Um, and I think that I could definitely go and fix it. That's why I'm getting my master's now so I could be properly educated and equipped to um, represent them as best as possible. Mm. And what, what are you getting your master's in again? Uh, master's in sport management. Okay. Okay. Wow. That, that's, that's, that's pretty neat, though. I didn't, I didn't connect the two with just what you said. Yeah. Um, just in regards to you know being able to being able to represent these being able to represent these young athletes and you know help them navigate some pitfalls that they might have not seen might have not known and you know just just being just being that 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 confidant and being the individual just to have that insight so that, that that's that's dope yeah that's that's pretty dope that's pretty dope so now I want to I want to talk with you about about this about the, about how my introduction to you. I, I think I was scrolling like through some reels. Okay, uh-huh. I think I was scrolling through some reels, and and then I happened to come across this this young lady who was on a track. And I was like, okay, and then I happened to see her. It seemed like interviewing people, and I was like, that's a very small microphone. <laughs> I said, I said, what is that thing that she's holding in her hand? That is very, very, very small. So can can you tell us? We we I I, I want I want all the tea. Okay. I want all the tea on on, on tiny talks right. on the track. Like when did this when when was the inception of this concept? Right. So my teammates know me very well, but I have a very um bright personality to say the least. Um and I would just sit before practice and just talk to them. I would just interview them questions. I'll just interview them in a style that sounds like you're in an interview. I'll just be sitting there like, so how was your day today? Do you think this affected your race today? Just randomly. And they were like, you should start doing interviews. I'm like, okay, I don't know what that means. And then I went home that night and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I have nothing else better to do. Because like, I want to buy a microphone. So I was just Googling stuff. And then on Amazon, I saw a tiny mic and I said, perfect. So I bought the microphone. Turns out the microphone is actually a real microphone. It's just tiny. So that's important to know when speaking. Um, so I bought the microphone and I just started doing questions. Um, and that's really where it went. I just have all these questions in the back of my head that I really want to know. And I have the personality to do it. So that's how that got started. It all started with practice. My teammates were like, you should definitely start doing it. And then um, that's how I created it. And then from a name standpoint, um, I was on Snapchat just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, what should the name be? I went from Tiny Talks with Demetra. Tiny Talk, uh, it's like mini, mini mics on Monday. There was a lot, but then I ended up ultimately coming to um, Tiny Talks on the track. I um, mean, that's how we, um, we're here now. So every week I kind of think of what questions do I want to ask? What's the trends that's going on? And then I show up to the track and ask the questions. Wow. Have have you ever thought about have you ever thought about doing a doing a podcast or having your own podcast? Yes. So um, I read this book called Athletes of Brands Two by Jeremy Darlow, and 
basically it says to start something while you're an athlete. Um, and that's how Tiny Talks came. But originally, um, a lot of people told me I should either make a YouTube channel or start a po podcast in some way, shape, or form. So I've been considering it. Um, I'll probably do it after I graduate, if I'm being very honest. Um, Tiny Talks just come naturally to me at the moment when it comes to editing and everything. But um, I do, in the, in the near future, I definitely see a podcast or some YouTube channel on a consistent basis coming to fruition. Yeah, 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 yeah. De definitely, De definitely. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna say I think there's potential there. I'm, I'm gonna say there, there, there's definitely a lot of potential there. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of potential there. Just in one, you're consistent. You're, 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 you're consistent uh, with, with, with doing, doing your tiny talks. Uh, I've, I've seen that, and even outside of that, you know, you, you get other people engaged uh -huh. because I'm, I'm sure there's a point to where when you're at a track meet that there's some other people who you might have not been going for initially. They kind of you know, try and creep into the picture and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if I can support you anyway, let me know. Let me know. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. For sure. For sure. So what so what does the future look look like for you? Like, let, let's say we fast forward time and then let's say. Wait a minute. No, I'm going to I'll take that because I'm going to ask you a different question. I'm going to ask you a different question. OK, okay so we're going to I'm going to piggyback still off the tiny talk. If there, if there were, if you had the opportunity, mm -hmm. if you had the opportunity to sit down and have a dinner mm. with five people, you can go with three. You can go with three. Okay. <laughs> like five is a lot. After I said it, I was like, five is a lot. You can you can sit down and have a dinner with three people, living or dead. Who would be these three people that you would just want to sit down and just have like a conversation with? Ooh. I'm gonna choose a lie that makes my decision a little bit easier. And I'm gonna go with athletes just because that's where I am from a mental space. I will sit down with, I will go to the sports industry. Um, so I will sit down with Ron James, Serena Williams, and then Nicole Lynn. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Break, break, break that down. Um, so LeBron James, I just love how he like carries himself like as an athlete and outside of being an athlete. I like what he stands for. Um, and I like how he composes himself like in every situation possible, like even if the media attacks him, like he's good. Same for Serena Williams. I love that woman to death. I don't know what it is about her. I don't know it's because she's a black woman, but just the way she carries herself every single time, like whether she performs good or bad, like, I don't know, like the, her ability to just like be okay. And I like that. Cause I feel like sometimes when you're an athlete, things don't go your way, but she holds herself well. I don't know if it's because of who she is or her daughter. I'm not sure, but it's very admirable um, just to watch her just like, how she carries herself is I love it. Um, and then Nicole Lynn, she's a black woman. She's a sports agent. She just became the president of Clutch Sports. Um, just because what I want in my I've talked to her before, just to have like an actual sit down. Like I think that would be awesome, just to kind of see um, what advice she would have for me. Because uh, I, I know you could read about her life. But I'm curious what, her, what advice she has for me, and um, just some things that the media doesn't know about her that she thinks has pushed her forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's been it's been pretty dope dope to watch her journey. I saw a picture of her like the other day, uh -huh. on, on I think it was like LinkedIn or Twitter, and I think she put a tweet out and she was like, "I would love to meet Rich Paul." And then uh -huh. it was like, you know, where where we were versus how it's going, and it's like that's pretty that's pretty dope just to see, you know, the the like when when you put in the work, and then bringing what you want to fruition big deal yeah for sure <laughs> very, very 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 big deal very big deal so now i, I want to ask you this now where where do you where do you see where where does demetra desire to be in the and i and i'm i, I know that's a big question but i'm i'm just i'm just curious like like how how you see yourself and where you desire to be like in the next like five years yeah so in the next five years i've had my masters by then i would have set for it uh, all the exams that I need to be certified to be, whether it's NFL agent, MLB agent, would have taken all of those. Um, and I should be an agent by then. Um, that's the, I mean, that's ultimately the goal. Five years from now, that should, without, in two years, it should be a thing, honestly. Um, so I put on working for an agency. I'm pretty neutral on what agency I want to work for. I have the resume to kind of get it done. Um, mm -hmm. I think I have the skill set to be a great agent as well. So five years, that's where I see myself. And also, too, um, within the next couple of years, um, 
NCAA is passing the bylaw, the name, image, and likeness bylaw. So I plan on being an agent for that as well. Um, I'm not sure everybody with contracts in college, but I think a handful definitely will. Um, and me personally, I've been affected by that bylaw. So I definitely want to be an agent to collegiate athletes because right now there's no rules around it of who could represent athletes. Mm -hmm. So in the next couple of years, the next five years, I think it's going to be a completely new market um, for athletes to get representation. So I definitely want to be involved because I could see a lot going wrong and I want them to know, like, I'm here for you. I was definitely in your position before. I've definitely violated the law before as well on accident. So I know the ins and outs of the law. Um, and I just want to be able to help them and be able to make money off of their name as they should have been given this entire time. Mm. Yeah. Have, have, have you always have you always been that that servant leader focused? Yes. Um, even since I was a kid, honestly, I just I like to help people. I really do. Um, and I originally came here, side note, as a health science studies major freshman year, because I thought the only way to help people was to be like hands on, be a doctor, be a nurse, which is kind of like they definitely help people. So that was my major. I was pre-health science. Like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an athletic trainer, still wants to be in the sports world, but that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to help people get better. Um, that was short lived. After a semester, I said, there's other ways to help people. And that's when I went to marketing and sport management, because marketing, you see it every single day, whether you believe it or not. So I wanted to be like people see marketing every day where it's a billboard you look at for two seconds, something you see. So I wanted to be on that side of it and inspire people while they're driving to work, while they're watching TV, whatever the case may be. So I've always been led to kind of make an impact on people's lives. I mean, if that means I need to be a servant, I'll do that. That means I need to lead them in a different direction, I'll do that. But whatever it means, um, whatever is needed to basically inspire and impact their lives, that's kind of where I tend to like lean towards. I got you. I got you. And then even with the with the marketing, with the marketing background and just having that level of understanding, I see I see how the two can definitely coincide. And I see how you can help a lot of people right. um, with, you know, helping them expand their message or, you know, creating a unique path for them to be able to create the platform and, and really get that out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dope, dope, dope. Well, I, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've enjoyed our dialogue today. I've, I've enjoyed our dialogue today. Getting, getting to hear a little bit more about you, the backstory about, about the track prayer, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you will. Oh God. Let me ask you this one though. Before we, before we get into the two minute drill. Uh -huh. Oh Lord. <laughs> how, how difficult is it to really be a Division One athlete, as well as being able to maintain? you know, being your own individual person? Yeah, I would say it's tough, honestly. So I have my planner right here. I live by my planner, but um, kind of come to terms of who I am outside of sports, I'm gonna be honest, it hit when COVID happened because it was the mm -hmm. middle of the track season. Um, like that was my life, which is fine. Like I just went to school, I went to practice, that was it. Um, it was very much, I knew what to do, same routine. COVID happened, it just stopped. Um, so. I was still in the same routine, just from a body standpoint, I would still wake up at the same time. But that really made me dive into like who I am as a person and what do I want. So that's when I started um, thinking about what can I start from a brand standpoint um, for myself, because I, I believe I am a brand. I think we are individual brands, honestly. Um, so what can I do for myself? And then from there, this entire pandemic started when it first happened. That's when I kind of like found things that I like to do. I already knew what I was good. I already knew I wanted to do marketing, but how can I perfect my craft in my, in my long time? Like, what can I do? So I started buying books and I still do it now. I still read like books about marketing and um, like different policies that's going on in the sports industry. Like I always stay on end on that. And I will say, I didn't do that before the pandemic. So I found what I liked in the pandemic and I still do it now um, to kind of keep myself. Like I know who I am outside of being an athlete now. Um, and I love it, honestly. So um, that pandemic time really helped me figure it out. Like I said, I live by my planner. That's how I know when to go to class, practice, work. Um, that's literally my life. Very organized when it comes to that. So never miss a deadline. I'm always on time for everything. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a good good habit to have for sure. I think I think it's a great habit because I have you know I, I I I've gone through my fair share of planners. I did the passion planner. I did the uh, the the panda planner. And now I just I'm just traditional notebook, old school right. spiral, just writing my my to do's for the day. I don't so, have a calendar on the side or nothing. No, nah, I don't have a calendar. I mean, I got the calendar in my phone. Oh, OK. OK. I have to have the calendar in my phone and then I write the I write at the beginning of the week. I write the dates out. So, you know, whatever date it is. Right. You write so, it in pen at least, right? Hmm? You write it in pen at least right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, even though some days, even though sometimes I write the wrong day, I was writing the wrong month. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> but I mean, either way, the stuff I had to do was still the stuff I had to do. Right. 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 Got that. Yeah, yeah, the, the most important stuff, the most important stuff. But now we're, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and dive into the two minute drill. Okay. Miss Carter, are you ready? I think so. I'm okay. Ready. <laughs> let me let me just break down what, what it is exactly. So the two minute drill, I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. And ultimately, you know, just letting people see just like a different side of you. Um, ultimately, just allowing us to just have a little bit of fun on, on the show. And then we're going to we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to let you tell the people where they can find you, how they can connect with you. And then we're going to say our goodbyes. Awesome. All right. All right. Here we go. Favorite food. Oh, <laughs> cheesecake. <laughs> what kind? Oh, any kind. So strawberry. Let's go with strawberry. OK. OK. What, what's, what's your favorite? What's the last book you read? Oh, um, Quiet Strength by Tony Dungy. OK. 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 What, what's what's your favorite podcast? Yours. Yeah, I, I, what, what's, really, what's, what's, what's really your favorite podcast? I don't do that when people say that. I do that so people really can share if they have a favorite podcast. Um, I don't know if it's that te technically a show, but I am athlete. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I am athlete. Yeah, that's a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You right on. You right on. What, what's your Netflix or what's your streaming show of preference? Um, I would say Netflix. And then what 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 show what show on Netflix? Right now I'm watching The Circle. Hmm. Okay. I haven't seen. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, okay. I'll watch it. Okay. Okay. And then what what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? You can take your time. Ooh. I would say work hard in your sport. Um. No matter what happens, work hard in your sport, and no matter what, you need to understand that you are somebody outside of just your sport. Your sport does not define you in any shape or capacity. Um, you're more than just an athlete. And we heard that time and time again. But you really are more than just an athlete. So take time to find yourself outside your sport, um, and then always work hard in your sport as well. Dope, dope, dope. And last question, just to round it off, who's one guest that you would like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Ooh. I'm trying to think. You know who I'd be good for you? Akira Nugent. She's a 60 hurdle champion from Baylor. Okay. Okay. You you might have to hook that up, but okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. See, there it is. Two minute drill. It wasn't it wasn't pain. It wasn't as bad as running a 100. <laughs> Oh, man. So, uh, Demetri, go ahead. Let, let the people know where they can find you, how they can follow you and, and connect with you and find out more about Tiny Talks on the Track. Yes. So thank you all for watching. You can follow me on TikTok and Instagram. All my social platforms are the same. It is Demetra underscore Carter. That's where you can find me and ask for my Tiny Talks on the Track. That is on Instagram, on my reels. I post at least once every week. Um, if you see me and want to be featured, just just grab me to the side. I always keep my microphone on me, but make sure y'all tap in on my Instagram. Thank you. There it is. There it is. Well, I, I appreciate you, uh, Miss Carter, taking time to, to hang out with us um, today and, and really just, just share share your story and, and, and share your prayers on the track as well as your tiny talks on the track with us. <laughs> so, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And, and to all the ballers out there listening, all the ballers out there rocking, I would encourage you all definitely, definitely go check out Demetra's uh, Instagram because the, the tiny talks there. She has some pretty, really, she has some really interesting questions. I'm like, wait, what? How did you come up with that? Just like we all heard her share, you know, she has questions going on in the back of her head. And, and th these are these are great questions that, you know, we even want to know the answers to. So be sure to check out her Instagram, screenshot the episode and and send it to her. Let her know what, what stood out to you and be sure to subscribe 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 and until next time ballers uh i'm jonathan jones this is beyond the ball where we help you succeed beyond your degree hello my name is demetra carter and you're listening to beyond the ball with jonathan jones <laughs>